Took me six hours before, like eight seasons. This is year number three. Bingo didn't even do that. Uh, wrong. Did it in my third year. And then went back to back and did it again in my fourth. So, I did do that. Did do that. Uh, and then came back and did it again. So, you're not quite on the ball with that one. Bingo thinks he's so much better than me at everything in life. I bet. Okay, maybe not, maybe not everything. That's a little bit of a stretch. But maybe in this one particular thing that I created, somewhat popularized, maybe I'm a little bit better at that one specific thing. Uh, I don't know. Well, everybody, everybody is in here. 500 people. I want everybody to screenshot this. Tweet it at Bingle. And say RBT challenged you to do this in less than three years. And I want to see. I want Bingle's Twitter to absolutely blow up with 500 mentions of this screenshot and say, "Do this in less than three years." Everybody, everybody, do that, please. I'm begging you. We did the dang thing, boys. We're about to get into the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that little, pretty like preview to the video, kind of. Basically, we're going to go over some things before we start. If you guys want to download the roster, it is zero overall on Xbox. And all you have to do is either type that in. Uh, you'll see my gamer tag, which is Bengal Designs. The description is Bengal Man. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get to this roster. Got to make the franchise first. So this is, of course, the team. Zero overall, zero offense, zero defense. The lowest overall a player can be, despite having all zero stats, is a 12. Now... I know we're going to get some comments about this, so I, I might as well address this before it happens. RBT, well, I guess, other than a Fortnite dispute we had where we haven't talked in a month, I DM'd him today. We talked about it, uh, about this thing. Apparently, he did it in two years, is what he's telling me. I'm not sure if there's truth in that. I could confirm, uh, but I don't know. He said in the intro, three years. I'm not sure. I'm going to try and do it in one. Not sure if that's the title. Hopefully, I can do it in one year. I'm going to go balls to the wall all out trying to win this in the first year and then hopefully win it in the second so i'm going all out this is not realistic if you guys want to see more realistic rebuilds they're on the channel they're you know just search it up or look on my channel you'll find the realistic rebuilds this is not that i'm going to use every single thing at my disposal signing free agents making trades to win this in season number one if not season number two it's a lock but i'm going to do my best shot to rebuild the zero overall team in one year. Yeah, you know, it's worth a shot, huh? All right, this is the team. And I know last video, everyone talked about how there are a lot of Jets. I didn't make the roster. Uh, I just made alterations to it. Everyone is, you know, zero overall in every set. Kelvin Beecham, zero overalls across the board. That was actually not a bad screenshot if we get uh, Miles Garrett in there. So he does still have superstar development, but if I'm trying to win this in one year, he's not usable. Maybe in two. I'm not sure how much value the superstar development will have in trades if he's a, you know, zero overall on everything. Probably not much at all. There's not a really good way to do this because everyone, despite how bad they are, they're still getting paid the same amount. So if we go to edit here, um, you can see the contract. I don't think you can edit contracts. I don't really play around editing. Oh, you can. But as you can see, he's still getting paid so much per year. His cap hit is 7.5 per year nearly. So we still have that cap hit going against us. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to make some of these trades. But if anyone can do this in a year, I'm confident that I can. Madden Sim likes to screw me over. I'm not having it this time. I'm not. We are going to the Super Bowl in year one. It's going to be so much cheesing the CPU, signing free agents, trading free agents, trading players. Somehow, we're going to try to do this in one year. Going to be a lot of this right here. Playing the free agent marketplace. It's pretty much impossible to do it in one year. If not, we're going to go for two. Tariq Cohen's a free agent uh, in this roster. I'm okay with it. I'm going to use it to my advantage. RBT had everything here that I did or that I do. It's not going to be easy. Picks, players. Somehow we're going to make this a reality. So I'm just going to start signing players, to be honest. 66.8 million cap room. It's awesome that we're doing it with the Browns because... They do have the youngest roster in the NFL by a lot. All of these players that we're signing right now, their cap hit will be a little bit larger, but they are tradable. 
they are decent pieces that we can use and uh we're gonna have to sign everyone I, I know i'm cheesing this is what you have to do if it's possible to do it in one year and um i mean we'll see what i can accomplish i'm gonna go through i mean you'll see the trades as they happen just assume uh anyone that isn't a 12 overall i signed here in free agency we might we might uh, lay off the fullbacks a little bit this is my last signing i'm doing it's kadeem carey former arizona wildcat right there i remember him there i remember like in that draft class maybe lace sea trunk was there as well these out of league but i signed a bunch of players i'm gonna move positions around a little bit Tariq cohen might be a decent receiver i'll probably just leave him at running back um i might move vjax to tight end if he fits better and i know if i move jay howard to defensive tackle he might go up because usually especially three four ends when they move over to defensive tackle they do go up he might not i don't know he was what 79 overall he is now an 80 overall so that works uh but yeah i mean we're gonna have to have to see what we can do here got isa abdul kadus mo alexander maurice alexander at strong safety got darrell revis this is not gonna be easy with this first trade, trading Maurice Alexander and Nikita Whitlock for Dante Fowler Jr. of the Jaguars. Maybe I'll use him as a trade piece. I'm not quite sure. So I'm really trying to get Tom Brady, and it's not working out. I need a third piece of a player they're interested in, but like more so than just four stars, and it's just not working out. They would say they need a center. Like, I have centers. They don't really want any of them. Tom Brady would be pretty big for me. <laughs> I just can't quite get Tom Brady. I have to make something else happen in order to be able to do that. Um, don't have the pieces right now, but he's the key to winning this in year one. I know this for a fact. He will be. He's the best quarterback in the game. How can he not be? He's old. Easiest one to trade for. It makes the most sense. This is actually, this will be impossible in year one. I definitely can't do it year one. It just won't happen. All right, boom. Julio Jones is on the team. Quinton Copels, Akeem Ayers, and a second for Julio Jones. Decent receiver for Tom Brady to be throwing to. I'm getting Tom Brady. I'm telling you, it's happening. I haven't figured out how to do it yet, but I'm getting it. I'm getting him on the team. Julio's on the Browns. Little fun fact I just remembered. Julio Jones. The fun fact. I, I, I have to say fun fact. I think I have some kind of Tourette syndrome or OCD for sure. But fun fact about Julio Jones. I don't, I don't know. I'm going off on a weird tangent. But fun fact about Julio Jones. We get a fun fact counter. I'm going to say it again. Fun fact about Julio Jones is that the Browns traded with, uh, I want to say it was the Texans. And then the Texans, or, oh, I think it was with the Chiefs. I think the Browns traded with the Chiefs who traded with the Falcons. There's some weird thing there. The Browns had the pick where Julio Jones was taken in his draft class. I don't recall the year. I want to say it was 2000 and 9 2010 maybe either 2009 or 2010 oh it might have been it might have been 2011 it I, i'm all over the place here we're julio jones the browns had that draft pick and now he's on the browns i took the longest possible way to get to there uh i apologize i'm not going to redo it i don't do that all right boom we figured it out quintoris lopez jones it's another fun fact that's what his name actually is was taken uh, in the 2011 draft, so I think they worked my way up to that. But I don't, we're not gonna we're not gonna stay on that for too much longer. Let's try to move some of these players. 36 year old Anquan Bolden can't wait. Actually, you know what? Dante Fowler is a pretty good pickup. All right, boom. We got DeForest Buckner, Darius Green, Anquan Bolden, and CEO Moore for DeForest Buckner of the San Francisco 49ers. I it's just I know I keep saying this. It is not possible to do this in year one. I just don't have enough trade pieces, so I'm trying to save my picks a little bit because i guess really the target now is year number two because I, mean, I just don't think i'll be able to finesse the cpu and get enough pieces uh in order to make this team good enough i just i don't think it's possible with this trade i'm trading isa abdul kadus perry riley jr and detone jones for travis kelsey of the kansas city chiefs 99 overall getting quite a few of those already in julio now in travis kelsey deforest buckner doesn't fall under that same category but you know who will Tom Brady. I need him on this team. With this trade, Gary Barnage, Jerome Felton, and Gabe Wright for the potential real-life NFL MVP this year. Todd Gurley, only a 91 overall. This is an older update when the uh, roster was made. Decent starting running back, obviously, for our squad. And uh, now I can kind of rid away the rest of these guys. I mean, Antonio Andrews, I thought, was a fullback. 
uh, on the Titans. I guess he might have been like third string running back. Because I, I guess, you know, um, LSU fullback. Who is their Titans fullback? Justin Fowler. He, I guess, was their fullback. I don't know. Anthony Andrews, I guess, running back. Whatever. I guess the maker of this roster traded Joe Thomas to the, uh, excuse me, to the Jets and a number of other players to the Jets. I, I'm sure it was because of cap um, or something. There are a lot of Browns on this team. David Njoku being one of them. We could actually work with this. Uh, I might try to trade for Joe Thomas. Bring him back to Cleveland. Darrell Revis and Kadeem Carey secures me Joe Thomas. I might try to trade him. Not sure, but <laughs> 399 is on this team now. I'm trying out here. I'm working hard. Cheese CPU. That's what I'm pretty good at, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. I don't really have a lot of other positions to work with. Kind of weird that Zach Orr is in free agency and is only a 73 overall. Uh, he had some kind of career-ending injury, potentially, and they told him he could never play again after having a sick rookie season with the Ravens, and then he, I think, maybe tried to come back. I I don't really know what his deal is, but uh, yeah, he should probably be a little bit closer to an 80 overall. With this trade, I'm trading Daryl Washington, John Urschel, and a third for Casey Hayward. This is an old roster. He's only an 87 overall where he should be obviously much higher. Debatably, like, plus 10 to his overall to make him a 97, uh, I think would probably be fair. He played the best of any cornerback in the NFL this year, statistically, uh, in terms of passer rating allowed and PFF grade and interception. He was just all over the field. Incredible player. Not that high of an overall in this. So he helps me, but maybe he's just trade bait. I don't know. No one wants Rob Ninkovich. I signed him. Uh, it's just, it's not possible year one, and I'm finding that out really quickly. It's wild how dumb the CPU is sometimes. Uh, Madden trade logic is terrible, because I signed three free agent middle linebackers, and I've traded them for Fletcher Cox, one of the best defensive tackles in the league. He's absolutely insane. And uh, now our defensive interior, at least on the line, is incredible between these two players. Fletcher Cox is only 26. Like, man... I gotta figure out ways to get this team better. It's just, there's way too many 12 overalls. My cap situation is really, really bad right now. I'm going to have to go in and, um, and cut some players with a gigantic cap hit because, like, Joe Thomas doesn't work. These are all gonna be traded players. Kevin Zeitler, the penalty's super high for cutting him. Josh McCown's gotta get cut. I need to cut a lot of these players. I'm pretty much just gonna go through and cut players where, uh, the cap penalty, I, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like the cap penalty being as high as it is for cutting some of these players, but I don't really have a lot of choice. I don't really have a lot of options, unfortunately. Like, that's, this is the biggest reason why, uh, rebuilding a zero overall team in such a low amount of time is so difficult, is because you have no money to work with. Like, here's another Jet player, ASJ. Austin Safarian Jenkins, gotta cut him. I just have no money to work with. No teams have any interest in VJAX. I could make him a tight end. His overall might skyrocket. I'm not really sure. He's an 81 overall uh, wide receiver. Let's see what his overall goes up to a tight end. I assume it's gonna be much higher. 89. He might have some value now. All right, at this point, I'm just gonna have to play the year two game because I don't think it's possible for me to be able to uh, do this in one year. It's just not. With this trade, trading Jeremy Zuta, Jay Howard, and a fifth next year for the first round pick of the San Francisco 49ers. I'm I'm banking on year two at this point because year one, you just can't do it. I mean, I've got some good pieces in place, but it just isn't possible for this team to do it in a uh, in year one. It just isn't. I don't I don't have enough good pieces. However, I'm gonna continue to trade and uh, hopefully acquire a bunch more picks. Because it's also, if you guys didn't know, harder to trade for players in the first year. Maybe I can get AB right here. Let's try that out. Oh, okay. Pretty close. With this trade, Taron Jones, Garrett Reynolds gets me a first rounder from the New York Jets. I'm just going to, I'm going first round pick crazy. I'm running out of uh, trade bait, but you know, we'll see what we can do. Uh, the Colts, for whatever reason, had gold, not gold. What the, f what am I doing? Had green interest in Antonio Andrews. I'm not sure why they they just wanted him more than guys like Ryan Matthews. I mean, I guess he, maybe he's younger. We have their first round pick in that trade. 
And uh, not quite done yet. This team is going to go 0-16. But it may, maybe not... It maybe won't be the worst 0-16 you've ever seen. I don't know what that means. Vincent Jackson, Nick Million... Uh, Mick, Mick, Nick Mangold, geez, and a seventh round pick next year gets me a first uh, from the Miami Dolphins. Still trying to make some trades here. Don't have a lot of trade bait yet. It's pretty much Dennis Pitta. I'm going to keep Dante Fowler Jr. on the team. He's really young. Uh, he should develop well. So hopefully, if we get that going on, I'm also going to try to trade Will Johnson. And maybe this is my final three. Don't know if I'm going to find spots for him. Dennis Pitta and Will Johnson gets me the Steelers first rounder. That'll work just fine. I don't think I have anything else to trade. I mean, I could trade uh, Cherry Cohen. I could trade maybe Jacob Tammy or Will Ty will have interest. And if I can do that, Will Ty should have interest. Ooh, Chiefs, okay. Jacob Tammy and Tariq Cohen gets me a second round pick from the Chiefs. Tariq Cohen had good value because he's super young, but no one had green interest on him, which was a little bit surprising considering Antonio Andrews did. Um... And if I could trade Will Ty for really anything, we're going to be business because all the rest of this team is either a 12 overall or a player that I actually want to hold on to. And Rob Ninkovich has no trade value from anyone, which is a little bit surprising. But it is what it is. Oh, shit. Chiefs? No. It's just a glitch. Will Ty, Rob Ninkovich, and a four gets me a first rounder from the Broncos, and I am done with trades. Um, I guess for right now. I'm sure I'm going to make a bunch more later. This is the roster... We're dealing with this is an 0 and 12 team Pre or, what is this 1940 it's an 0 and 16 team for sure um i could make an effort to go for the playoffs i mean we'll probably get the number one pick regardless i might i might sign some free agents just to start all right signed a bunch of free agents we got aaron williams hook em horns rest of the team is not too good obviously uh, it's still probably an 0-16, but I don't know. Maybe Matt Barkley can do something for us. We do have some playmakers, but I'm not really sure what this team's going to do, if anything. We, we can't win it in year one. Like there's, there's just no feasible way with this team. No coach XP, nothing like that. We're going to simulate to about the midseason mark. I might cut it off uh, just prior so that I can maybe make some midseason trades if anyone has a decent amount of XP. Not sure, probably won't. But I'll see you guys about week 7 or week 8, week 9 in that range. It is about the midseason mark. Uh, we can still trade if we want to. And uh, we are 1-6. We've actually won a game. I am super excited to see who we beat. Because it could not have been good. At least the games are close. We had an all-zero overall team. These games were not close at all. These games are actually somewhat really close. We played the Steelers really tight. Played the Colts really tight. I got kind of crushed by the Bengals. Beat the Jets. That does make sense. We're, we have the first round pick, so either way, we are going to have um, number one overall pick, probably. Barely lost to the Titans. Barely lost to the Texans. Interesting. I thought we'd go 0-16. Turns out we haven't. I have some more coach XP. I'm going to spend that. Um, Julio's got a decent amount of XP defensively. Nothing really even good at all. Spend that coach XP, though. We could make some trades here. I mean, I don't think there's any rebounding to making the playoffs. So I'm just going to simulate to the playoffs, and we won't make them. It is what it is. All right, clearly we didn't make the playoffs. Finished 3-13, and which was not the worst in the NFL, maybe. That is three wins. We'll check out the stats. Matt Barkley. <laughs> Nearly 6,000 yards passing. 47 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. How about for that uh, scheme trying out? Rushing, Todd Gurley, 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Fumbled the ball three times, though, which is unfortunate. Marcus Wilson in the slot, 117 catches, nearly 1,400 yards, 9 touchdowns. Travis Kelsey, 1,200 yards, 7 touchdowns on 90 catches. Philly Brown had 90 catches. Julio had 11 touchdowns. Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley, led her team in touchdown catches with 12. Nearly 1,000 yards receiving for him. Julio almost had 1,500 yards. Blocking. Quarterback sacks, 15 for Ja Reed, 10 for Jeff Adams allowed. Max Bolo led our team in tackles with 138. Tackles for loss would be 13 from Fletcher Cox. QB sacks, 11 from Fletcher Cox, 9.5 for Rasheed Hagman, 8.5 for Dante Fowler Jr., 6 for Phil. Is it Phil Dawson or Paul? Phil Dawson's a kicker out of Texas. It's Paul Dawson. PJ, I guess. Interceptions, 5 for Casey Hayward, 3 for P. 
PJ. It feels weird for me to say it because I knew him at TCU. Three for Antonio Allen, three for Brandon Flowers. Forced fumbles. We have two for Bulla, two for Dawson. Fumble recoveries, one for just a few players. And I doubt any defensive touchdowns. No, we don't have any. Let's check out awards. We were first in the NFL in offensive yards. That's insane. 32nd, though, in defensive yards allowed. So we were the worst. Aaron Rodgers wins MVP. Matt Barkley comes in second. Okay. That's got to be AFC Offensive Player of the Year then. It, it, it is. Ty Gurley at number seven. He honestly should have won it with his rushing and receiving. Incredible. Defensive Player of the Year. David Harris. The best young player in the league. Shout out to those of you who remember that reference. No Browns in here. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Leonard Fournette. No Browns. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Carl Lawson. No Browns. So we're in an interesting situation with Matt Barkley, who now has quick development after winning Offensive Player of the Year and QB of the Year. I don't know. He got quick development at some point during the, uh, one of these weeks, probably for an Offensive Player of the Week. There it is. Week 13, he got quick development randomly. He has a lot of XP as well. Marquez Wilson has so much XP. Quick development as well for him for making the Pro Bowl, leading the NFL in receptions. I know people are going to be mad when I trade them away. They're increased trade bait now. That's all they are to me. Well, maybe not Marcus Wilson. We actually might hold on to him. But uh, we're doing okay. We're on pace to do this in year two, I think. We're doing pretty well. Year one was just impossible. There was no feasible way. Year two, I think it's very doable. As far as players to re-sign, I'm not going to deal with any of them. I'm just going to figure out a new team to get uh, here in free agency and then in the draft. We have no cap room at all. I probably want Malcolm Butler, so I'm going to try and create some cap space. Sharif Floyd is excellent trade value as well. I got to clear some cap space somehow. Trading Kevin Zeitler, Kelvin Beecham, and a future, or excuse me, a current seventh for a future seventh from the Bears. I think that should give me more cap room. It's showing us 48 mil, and I'm not sure if that was some glitch because it, now it shows negative three still. Um, well, now it shows 160. Yeah, I, there's just no feasible way I can sign anybody. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. We're just going to pretty much prepare for the draft. Got to have a huge draft. All right, NFL draft time. Here we are. We have the first, second, fifth overall pick as well as the ninth and the 11th, 16th, 19th, 23rd, 25th. I know it's not realistic. Obviously, even close. It's super cheesy. Let's just assume the Browns are fantastic at working moves and pretty much own every pick in the draft we're gonna work with it trading the second overall pick for the third picking up another second and a third round pick in the process from the baltimore ravens now i hold the number one overall pick i have no intentions on taking this pick for a number of reasons as i'm going to continue to trade this third round or third overall pick down with the teams below me uh let's see you as a number four pick honestly i could probably take the number one overall pick and get the two back and screw over the Ravens some more. Do the Ravens have anyone I want? Uh, no. So, drafting a quarterback is going to do me no good. That's just the bottom line. I need to trade for someone, whether it's Aaron Rodgers, whether it's Tom Brady. I don't particularly care. Can't draft a quarterback. I have to get lucky to land, you know, a stud QB, and there don't really seem to be any jumping out at me in this draft class. I got to continue to trade. And uh, that number one overall pick is likely going to leave. I got to decide what scheme we're going to play. Whether we're 4-3 or 3-4, I haven't decided yet. I'm leaning towards 4-3. Just keep it traditional. That's what I think would be the best. With this trade, trading the third overall pick, a future 6 and a 7, for a 1 this year, trading back down one spot, and picking up a 1 next year from the Chicago Bears. Should have good value at that point. So I still hold the first overall pick. Don't want to take it. Want to take a player. The question is, who is going to offer the most value for me with this number one overall pick? Because I want to get the best player I possibly can with this selection. So who's the youngest, who's the highest overall that I can get with this number one overall pick? Because this is the only time I'm going to have this vet much value in the draft with the number one overall pick. Have to make this count. I can only think of one player who would be worth my while. The sack attack from the silver and black is back, Khalil Mack. I said that maybe in the wrong order. It doesn't matter. Number one overall pick, Dante Fowler Jr. I upgraded him. He had 11 or 12K XP. I only could get him up to an 85. Kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Also, a second round pick this year for Khalil Mack. He'll be playing left end on the team. Significant upgrade over Dante Fowler Jr. I think it was worth what we traded away. Now, I'd really like to pick up Aaron Donald, but 
considering how he plays uh, right end in this roster instead of defensive tackle, which is where I'd like to play him, it may be a little bit more difficult to trade for. So I might instead want to trade for a defensive tackle. Or I could trade a defensive tackle. It would probably be Fletcher Cox because he had the most value. I wonder if I could just do this straight up. Of course not. Now, it maybe isn't worth what I'm giving up, but I think it is. Uh, Fletcher Cox, a second this year, a second next year for AD. Aaron Donald, one of the most dominant players we've ever seen in the NFL. That's a fact. He is so good. Unblockable one-on-one. -on -one, nearly unblockable in two-on-one. Aaron Donald, or 1v2, you could say, if we're talking about just AD. So, so good. He's going to play defensive tackle for us. I don't really think we're giving all that much up to get him. Fair trade in my mind. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. He'll play defensive tackle. I need to pick up a right end now. I'm okay with uh, DeForest Buckner still staying on the inside. We have just so many positions in need. Linebacker is a huge one. Cornerback for sure. Free safety. Strong safety. I could take draft picks, but more than likely, I want to turn these players into picks somehow. Or no, vice versa. Picks into players. Casey Hayward, a three and a four is going to get me JJ Watt of the Houston Texans. None, uh, another 99 overall. He is going to complete our defensive line. I don't know why I am stammering so much, but our full defensive line is complete. Aaron Donald, the tackle. Khalil Mack at left end, probably JJ Watt at right end. And um, what? Forrest Buckner. Okay. Could trade Joe Thomas. The problem with trading in the draft is you pretty much need another player to make these trades happen with these picks. You can't really trade picks straight up for players, and I don't really have anyone on my team that's tradable. So, you got a lot of 12 overalls. Like, Jermaine Curse isn't going to offer any value, obviously, as a 12 overall. So, this pick is pretty much just by itself. So, I, I don't really know what I can do with it. So, I think now what I'm going to do, in order to make this possible to win in year two, I am going to trade down. One of my favorite things, you guys know, love trading down. I think trading down would probably be for the best. Unless there's like a once-in-a-lifetime player I, I can't pass up on. Like Deshaun Dane's a decent player. Might want him. Listed a 3-4 pass rusher. Um, however, we could potentially play him in other places. He has the speed. Has the agility. Pursuit, hit power. I mean, finesse moves is high. He could definitely fit in with my team. All right, I think I'm just going to trade down these picks for uh, first-rounders next year. And the Saints are offering me quite a deal. Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously going to take this. First rounder this year, first rounder next year, second rounder next year. Sign me up. I'm going to trade down that pick. Seattle Seahawks are offering me the same thing. I'm in. Ninth pick is going to do um, the Seattle Seahawks. Not, not Seattle Seahawks. Why did I say that? San Francisco 49ers in uh, first and second next year. All right, give me the 11th overall pick. As Dane goes, I don't really care. And uh, I'm going to work even more magic. Give me a one, a two next year, as well as a third rounder. We're still, like, we just got out of the top ten. So these are still really, really valuable picks. I will take the Redskins first runner next year, also picking up a three and a seven. And then moving on to 19. I hope Cone's still available. I don't really need him. But he's a decent player in the defensive line. Kind of like what he has to offer. Uh, we're going to take him out of Clemson. 77 overall, ranked number 15 in the draft. He just doesn't fit the scheme. That's why his overall is low, even though he's ranked in the top 15. Drafted him at 19, 87 strength, 86 tackle, 85 block shot, 82 power move, 78 speed, 84 excel. He'll be a high overall defensive tackle. Could use it as trade bait. It's probably what I'll end up doing. This guy, Quan Odom out of Tennessee. He has high hit power, high zone, very strong, very fast. We're going to take him, see how good he is. Slow development. That sucks pretty bad. 92 speed, he's 6'4", that's crazy. 80 zone, 89 hit power. Very good player, just the slow development really is not doing many favors. Probably trade him as well. He'll have value somewhere. And then back to my favorite, I'm just trading down. Any first round pick I see, uh, pretty much sign me up. All right, I'm late in the second round now. I'm only getting second, or I'm actually in the third. I'm in the late in the third round. I'm only getting second round trade options. If I can find someone that I want, like decent power up, uh, power back, running back, Two option for me. We're gonna take him. Um, the overall, don't worry about it. Again, it's scheme, but he's ranked number 87 in the class. We took him at 83. Looks insane. 90 speed, 90 trucking, decent all-around stats. Otherwise, really, really good power back option. Elusiveness is super low. Awareness is low. You boost that. 
his overall will be higher. If we change the scheme to power back, it'll probably be 75-ish. So not too bad. Taking Steven Mixon here out of LSU. A little bit of an older player, but he's very good on the defensive line. 75 overall superstar development is actually quite good. 38 in the class. We took him at 108. 82 strength, 84 tackle, 84 block shot, 86 power move. And again, superstar development. His overall probably is a bit higher than 75. Just, again, based on scheme fit. Probably will end up trading him after moving him to defensive tackle. Get that overall up a bit. Those are my goals. Just more trading down. It's just going to happen. Hopefully, James Beckett out of Northern Illinois is pretty good. Uh, looks decent. 77 overall, ranked number 49 in the class. Hopefully, Jess will be trade, blade, uh, trade bait. Aside from awareness and pass block, he is a very good option at guard. Could potentially start him overall. Or excuse me, uh, development is only normal, so I'm probably not going to do that. And in my last pick, I am taking a player who's supposed to go undrafted, Latuan Mouton out of Maine, or Mountain. He is a 68 overall. Yeah, he's not that... I mean, I don't know. I don't know why he's overall so low. He has decent man, decent zone, decent press-ish speed. It's low play rec and awareness, and he can't really do much else. But he, he's not really that bad, especially for the sixth round. I don't know. We won't use him anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, okay, forgot to re-sign Matt Barkley and uh, Marcus Wilson. That was a major, major, major mistake. That was a big mistake. Oh, no. <laughs> Major lapse of judgment there. Trading that cornerback we drafted in two third-round picks to get Matt Barkley back, which I should have never had to do. Uh, the only reason I'm doing that is because I know his XP situation. And I know that he's going to have more value once I upgrade him to other teams. So that's my, that's my thought process there. Not much, maybe, but he's up to a 78 overall. Uh, I'm still going to touch awareness, which means he's going to continue to go up in overall, which will raise his value, which in turn will get me better players, which is I mean, really what I want. Doesn't move his overall. I should have just went all in on awareness, maybe. Corey Coleman, a two and a three, gets me back Marcus Wilson. I, get, I know I should never have lost him. Wasn't really paying attention. He does, however, have 65,000 XP in quick development, which means that he'll be very valuable to another team. He goes up to an 86 overall. I might just keep him, honestly. He might make more sense to keep because he's up to a pretty high overall right now and quick development, only 25 years old. Also, I'm going to show you guys how his overall is going to go up fairly drastically. All I have to do is go into my coaching schemes and change that to power back. It is now power back, and um, his overall goes up to... It is not a 68. It is a 72. All right, whatever. A little bit better than 68. All right, I'm going to finish upgrading the team. And then we're going to make some trades. I have so many picks. You wouldn't believe how many picks I have. I have a, a lot of picks. And, um, yeah, he's an 80 overall left dead, even though he's a 77. That's fun. What about Mixon over here? 75 superstar, 77 right end. All right, I'm going to move him to defensive tackle. He should have more value there. Yep, 81 overall, 84 overall, I guess, at defensive tackle. So that is a very good player. Aaron Donald will eventually play in that position. Uh, also, if you guys hear stuff out of my headphones, I'm watching an H3H3 H3 video, and this Pacific Islander is screaming a lot. BitConnect something. I, I don't really know what's going on. Broncos not interested in Quan Odom. Do you guys see how close that is to going through? an RBT. Well, okay, we're not going to talk about that. That is very, very small and very, very close to the end there. We can't, We got to make this trade go through for Chris Harris. Boom. Had to go to a top five pick. That's all right. Quan Odom, I think, was his name. Fourth overall pick. 31st overall pick projected. We had Chris Harris Jr. of the Denver Broncos. Solid starting cornerback, if I do say so myself. The way to get offensive linemen in this game is just pretty much trade second round picks for them. So, Zach Martin, he's the best at his position in the game. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and offer a second rounder for Zach Martin. Hopefully, that goes through, and it does not. Awesome. Adding a next year's fourth round pick gets the job done, though. Zach Martin, new starting right guard. We already have Joe Thomas. So, left tackle is fine. Left guard, center, and right tackle, different story. 
With this trade, I'm trading Arthur Brown, picked him up in free agency, a one and a two. For Michael Thomas of the New Orleans Saints, high overall, younger player. So he works out really, really well to pair with Julio Jones, two big-bodied receivers. Could use a slot guy, but maybe that's Marcus Wilson played there last time, even though he's more of a similar frame comparatively to these two fellas. Could use somebody else. So maybe I'm trading Marquez Wilson. I don't know. With this trade, trading that fella Mixon I drafted, as well as a one and a three for Tom Brady. Tom Terrific to be our new starting quarterback. I think that's probably a decent pickup for this team. A little bit better than Matt Barkley, who I still have. Uh, when I say still, I just traded for him pretty much, even though we already previously had him. And if you look to last year, as I'm probably going to trade James Beckett, if you look to last year and you think that Matt Barkley would have green value anywhere, he doesn't. I looked, but Beckett does, so that's good. Um, we didn't really need anyone on offense to perform. We had the best offense in the league, so we pretty much should just focus on the defensive side of the ball, I think. And um, I don't know, maybe that means acquiring a big play Slay, who's not really a high overall. I mean, 90s high, but what's, oh, Patriots want Matt Barkley now. They don't really have a quarterback, do they? Gronk? I have, ooh, slot receiver. Could go Dante Hightower. Could, Brandon Cooks in the slot would be deadly. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. With this trade, trading Matt Barkley, a first-round pick. This one's projected to be in the top five at number three. And Rex Burkhead, the only Patriot there for Brandon Cooks to be our new slot receiver. So we have a really good group of four wideouts um, through Julio Jones down to Marquez Wilson. And um, tight end, excellent. Still want to trade for offensive linemen. Haven't forgotten about that. See if I can trade James Beckett to a team that has green interest in him. And Seahawks have no offensive linemen that I'm interested in. Um, Bears... No. Bucks, probably not. Cardinals, likely not. Chargers would. Cowboys do. Travis Frederick. Let's go ahead and get Travis Frederick. I don't have the cap room. All right. We can easily ditch that amount of cap. We're going to add Miles Garrett's monster contract into this deal. We might take a hit from it, uh, but that's going to be fine. We'll try to add a seventh and see if that goes through. No. Um, might have to go as far as a 2020 fifth round pick doesn't go we'll go from something uh this year so it's gonna be beckett miles garrett who of course isn't even serviceable at 12 overall with all zero everything and a fifth this year for travis frederick and that does indeed get it done travis frederick is our new starting center daryl washington and christian kirksey's contract for forest lamp straight up he probably will end up starting at right guard very young was a rookie last season didn't play because of injury but he should uh do the job big fan of that and, uh, yeah, we have a lot of 99 overalls on this team. AD, Travis Kelsey, Tom Brady, Cleo Mack, Zach Martin, Julio Jones, JJ Watt. Joe Thomas isn't far off, but he's never going to reach that at this point in his career at 33. Um, he has been in the past and probably started off as such. Michael Thomas is close. Brandon Cook's close. Ty Gurley. It's a decent team, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. With this trade, trading Cone, that left end that we move over to defensive tackle, and a first-round pick for AJ Boye of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hopefully they need a cornerback now, and they do. And maybe, just maybe, I can trade A.J. Boye back for Jalen Ramsey. He was proving to be very difficult to trade for. And I got to back out in order to get him on the team again. Okay. Trading Ray Maluga, who I picked up in free agency, and Sir Kendrick West, who also picked up in free agency for a third-round pick. Don't really know what I'm going to do with that yet. Probably end up trading for some offensive line help. Uh, Brandon Scherf wouldn't be a bad one to target. With this trade, a 3 and a 7 for Brennan Scherf. Played a lot of tackle at Iowa. I'll most likely play him at right tackle. Still looking for... Um, no, you know what? I guess that... No, do I need a guard? I might need a guard still. No, I have Zach Martin. Uh, I have Forrest Lamp to play guard. I have a center in Travis Frederick. And um, I'm going to slide Brennan Scherf over to tackle. That's what he played at Iowa. And it was probably drafted as, to be honest. But team looking pretty nice. If all I can do now is figure out how to get some quality linebackers, cornerback, safeties, this is a really good team. I'm also imploring the strategy where I use picks to trade for offensive linemen because it's easy. And the offensive linemen in turn have more value to other teams. So I take those offensive linemen and I use it to trade for players. That's likely going to happen. I really need to figure out my, uh, my cap situation though. I have pretty much no room. 
With this trade, I am actually trading Forrest Lamp over Shaq Mason. Move Shaq Mason left guard. He has a higher development trade. He has superstar development, so I figured get Forrest Lamp out of there. I'm also trading two first-round picks in order to land Earl Thomas. Hook him horns. Best safety in the NFL uh, over the top. I think, you know, Harrison Smith is up there, but he doesn't really play free safety as much as you might think. He plays a lot on the edge, plays a lot as a strong safety, plays a lot as a linebacker more than anything, which is very odd. So some little food for thought there. Very good. Harrison Smith is awesome. But I think a pure free safety, Earl Thomas is better because he plays that position. Still going to be trading for O-Lyman. That as much has not changed. If I could actually land Bobby Wagner, that would be really nice. I might I might throw Shaq Mason in a trade right now. Um, unless, they, I mean, they might not even want him. Because they do have Forrest Lamp now. No, they still do. If I could get Bobby Wagner, that would be amazing. I also, the reason I have more cap room is I cut players who are 12 overall. Number two overall pick. I'm going to need a lot of value to get. Oh, actually, I don't even know if I do. If I trade... 27th overall in a second rounder. That's going to land me B Wags 54. Bobby Wagner, he's, I guess, number 57 now. It's not what number he wears. But uh, yeah, I can probably just trade for Shaq Mason back, honestly. And Forrest Lamp if I wanted him. Two third rounders lands me Shaq Mason. Welcome back to the team. And all we're missing now is a strong safety. Uh, still going to cut more players to save cap room. I'm missing. Um, so I'm playing a 4-3. I'm missing uh, two outside linebackers. Chris Ivory and two ones is going to get me Jared Davis. He's 91 overall. I'm going to play him probably at outside linebacker. And uh, his overall might even go up once I get all the schemes rocking. I still need another outside linebacker. I still need a strong safety. I'd love to land um, Landon Collins. But I'm not exactly sure how I would do it. I think probably... It would be trading for an offensive lineman, changing him to left tackle, and then landing Landon Collins. That might be what I have to do. A future one and Jamal Charles. Hook him horns, by the way. Gets me Forrest Lamp. Welcome back. I'll be moving him over to left tackle. I can't remember who I said I was. I think Landon Collins. Well, yeah, Giants need a left tackle. Even in Madden, obviously. I mean, I don't know why it would be any difference in year two. So Forrest Lamp also stays at 87. At left tackle. That's pretty neat. And now let's see. I don't have a lot of picks remaining. I've ran through a lot of them. And I'm going to be uh, out of an outside linebacker spot. But I can land Landon Collins by trading Forrest Lamp in a one. I would be more than happy. Forrest Lamp and my number two overall projected pick lands me Landon Collins. Excuse the pun-ish kind of thing. Land, Landon, whatever. I just went through and cut every 12 overall player on the team which will result in a lot of cap penalty next year. Uh, I don't particularly care. I'm trying to do this in the smallest amount of time possible, shortest amount of time possible. Needed to do it in order to create space for trades and signing free agents. And I need to sign free agents so that I can land myself. Do I even have picks? I don't even have picks. I'm just going to need to sign free agents to play some positions. And Well, actually, you know what I can do? is I still have Marcus Wilson. If I can trade Marcus Wilson for a starting caliber, either cornerback or outside linebacker, I'm going to do it. He has green interest in a lot of places, um, pretty much everywhere to work with. So I can pretty much take my pick of a decent player to start probably at linebacker. I think cornerback is more value to me, though. Ooh, Trevor Williams. Trevor Williams and Jatavis Brown. If I can land that, I would be very, very happy. Going to be very difficult. We might not be able to get Jatavis Brown. There's no way. Can I get Trevor Williams, though? Oh, I can't. That sucks. I need to figure out, like, a third-string cornerback who's really good somewhere. Or an older player and trade for him. All right. Took me signing two players in free agency in Brandon Coleman and Michael Floyd. Marcus Wilson as well, is headed to New Orleans. We got Marshawn Lattimore. He's only an 84 overall at this point uh, in wherever this roster is made. That's all right. We have a good group of three cornerbacks now. I need to fit, and I also signed Revis. Uh, I need to figure out how to get um, a decent quality outside linebacker. He doesn't have to be amazing, just decent. I signed some players. I don't know what position. I think it's not, yeah, Mike Martin. 
I think I brought back uh, Jeremy Zuta. Did I sign anybody else? Mike Harris? I think he got stabbed. That's maybe not so fun facty, but any value for these players? Jeremy Zuta has has yellow. All right. Dolphins, there's potential there. That's the only team. That's fine. Whoever the Dolphins have, I'm game. Lawrence Timmons? Ugh. What I could do is see if I could somehow finagle and Dominic Sue. Oh, it's actually quite possible. I don't have the picks, though. I might, if I can sign a uh, running back, or even you guys can take Sheldon Hurst. Oh, I can get in Dominic Sue. I know that I can. Maybe, oh, please go through. Rough. Went out and signed new free agent running backs. Tavon Austin somehow has quick development, yet isn't getting green interest from teams. Which, I mean, I guess makes sense. He's kind of kind of ass. But if I can make a trade work to land in Dominic Sue, that would be amazing. <sighs> so close to Dominic Sue. So close. I don't know how to I don't know how to work this. Take a six, please. Yet we're exceeding the league salary cap. You're saying I'm I have 30k. What do you mean? I'm gonna try to cut somebody. That trade worked though. That was what? Tavon Austin. Let me cut Mike Martin. He has no value. I was just gonna trade him somewhere else. Let me get in Dominic Sue, please. It was Tavon Austin, I believe, Jeremy Zuta. And a sixth round pick for Indomit and Sue. There we go, Indomit and Sue. Accepted. Got him on the team. Now, the reason I did that is he's actually going to have some trade value, hopefully, as a 96 overall. Um, I got to back out in order for him to pop up. Probably. All right, I guess he's a 95 overall. I thought I maybe saw his name uh, there a second ago. So now he has green interest from, it looks like, every single team in the NFL, except for one which was the Rams. Okay, so I have any other team to work with that has a linebacker that I want. CJ Mosley, only an 83 overall. It doesn't really interest me that much. Ryan Shazier definitely does, though. Oh, I might be able to do this. I might be able to do this easily. Here we go, Ryan Shazier. Ryan Shazier, and Dominic Sue and Charles Sims lands me Ryan Shazier. That worked out really, really well. All right. Autofill. This is the team. I need some backups, maybe. If I can sign a backup tight end and more wide receivers with my uh, current salary cap space, we're going to be in a really good spot. Kenny Britt. Rutgers bust. Welcome. Well, I guess he was a bust for the Titans, but he came out of Rutgers. Um, let's go Marlon Brown. He was decent for a year with the Ravens. Need a tight end? I'll take a backup tight end. Let's get Ryan Hewitt. Why not? Don't really have a lot of cap room for this. What did I say I needed? I don't know. All right, this is the team, though. Looks very, very good so far. Very good. I'm going to... Oh, I got to change the scheme. I just got to make sure everyone's playing at their best possible spot. Why is Aaron Donald starting at right end? He's a defensive tackle. Khalil Mack... Or did I not change Ryan Chazier? That could be what it is. He has listed a middle linebacker. If I move him over to left outside linebacker, we're probably going to be fine. All right, there we go. That looks much better. And I don't think I have the cap space to really sign anybody else. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn on um, CP, like auto sign or whatever, or fill roster, and they should give me some backups, I think. This is one of the best teams I've ever built, clearly, and we've done it before the start of season number two. I just want to make sure that Michael Thomas... Is playing in his best. He's possession. Brandon Cooks is what? Slot or speed, they call it. All right. I want him in the slot. All right, again, team is insane. Everyone should be in their correct position now, playing to the best of their ability. I think we're going to be doing okay. I'm going to use some Coach XP. What's our weakest position group? Offensive line, potentially. Probably, probably um, I want the most XP to go to the defensive backs. D-line set. And we'll be able to uh, change that. Probably linebackers next at the midseason mark. So, uh, speaking of which, I'll see you guys there. 16-0. and 0. It, it won't be because my team's too good. So, I can't go 16-0. and 0. I'm going to get first round E-limbed and then everyone's going to be like, oh, you suck. Uh, thanks for that. Okay, the dream might be alive. 
We are 7 and 0. Zach Martin's a free agent. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to a season 3, season 2 or a bust. Team looking sharp. Want to use this XP. How are we doing defensively? Uh Jared Davis has a lot cuz he might have superstar development and he does. Do you win anything? How do you have this much XP? Interception. There you go. Did you not win defensive player of the week? All right, you have superstar developments, just OP. Kind of already knew that. Coach XP, you guys see what I do. Player progression, you already know. Linebacker, then maybe next offensive line. I'm not going to upgrade the team right now. We're going to the playoffs. 7-0, and 16-0, could be a thing. Still will be a first round elim in the playoffs. That's just how it works. First round bye. It's what I like to see, baby. 16-0 and with the Cleveland Browns in year number two. There will be doubters. I understand this. I'll show team schedule. I don't force wins. I don't need to. We lost. Wow, that's a fucking loss if I've ever seen one. 65-7? to seven? Are you kidding me? All right. We don't care about the preseason, though. It was just a warm-up for the domination that would ensue over the course. 63-30, to 51 nothing over the Saints. What are these scores? 56 nothing over the Ravens. How does that feel, reigning Ravens? Force wins, clearly none. The only one where it doesn't say none is home because it's a bye week. Crushed it. Absolutely crushed it. Let's check out the stats. Let's see who did what. I'm very excited to see. Tom Brady. Oh my lord. 5,877 yards through the air. 60 touchdowns. Only 7 interceptions rushing Todd Gurley. 20 touchdowns with only 1 fumble. On 310 carries, 1,524 yards. Receiving Michael Thomas, 1,477 receiving yards on 111, excuse me, 112 catches. That's not what number that is. Seven touchdowns. Brandon Cooks at eight touchdowns. Julio, nearly 1,500 yards and 17 touchdowns. 11 for Travis Kelsey. Nine for Todd Gurley. Spreading the wealth a lot here. Blocking offensive line was great. Defensively, oh my goodness gracious. 118 tackles for Bobby Wagner. Tackles for loss was led by J.J. Watt with 24-12 from the sack attack from the silver and black. He's not called a tackle for loss attack, whatever. Sacks, 26 and a half for Khalil. 19 for J.J. Watt, 7 half from A.D., 7 from DeForest Buckner. Interceptions, 4 from B-Wags, 3 from a, a number of players. Only 2, I guess. That, you know, 2 is a number. Force fumbles, 4 for Jared Davis of the team. Fumble recoveries, 2 from J.J. Watt. Block kicks to Forrest Buckner and Bobby Wagner both had one. Safety from J.J. Watt. I don't usually show these because it's not, it doesn't usually matter. And then I see at least one defensive touchdown. We get one. It's Landon Collins. First in offensive yards in the NFL. Show me first. Show me first, baby. First in defensive yards. If it doesn't show it, it means it's the same as what your other one was. First in points scored. Can I see this? We'll just check so you guys can see defense first conversions we're down there a bit it doesn't matter red zone efficiency wow we are were we do we never go in the red zone 69 that's not well that actually is the best number scratch that penalties uh we had the fewest in the nfl turnovers um where are we here we have giveaways 13 not, not great it is what it is. I never show that. That's a fun thing to see. I do want to see NFL records. That's going to be a fun thing. Tom Brady wins MVP. Todd Gurley at number two. Back-to-back -back Browns in there. At one and two for MVP. Any other Browns? No way. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Tom Brady. And then there's Todd Gurley. And then back-to-back -back Steelers. That's interesting. Matt Barkley, the Patriots, in the top ten. Defensive Player of the Year is Khalil Mack at one. J.J. Watt at two. Bobby Wagner at three. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Browns. Jared Davis at number seven. Offensive rookie of the year is Austin duvernay Zardif, quarterback. Uh, no Browns. Defensive rookie of the year is Jerron Milne. He's a linebacker. I thought about drafting him. Um, best QB, Tom Brady. Best running back, Todd Gurley. Best receiver, Julio Jones. Michael Thomas at four. No Brandon Cooks. Best O-line, Browns, 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 Browns. Our starting five are the top five offensive linemen. Zach Martin, Joe Thomas, Travis Frederick, Shaq Mason, Brandon Scherf in order. Best D-line. Khalil Mack at one. J.J. Watt at two. No defensive tackles in here. That's frustrating. Best linebacker. No Browns, though. Not Well, not at number one, I mean. Bobby Wagner at four. Best DB, Aqib Talib. Landon Collins at six. No other Browns. Interesting. 
Best kicker is Chris Boswell. We all know the best kicker. He's not even in here. What a joke. What an absolute joke. Show me NFL records, though. I don't want I want season. Matt Barkley set the record for passing yards in a season last year. What? <laughs> I didn't know if that was a record. No, I thought it was. Tom Brady this year at number two. We're just all Browns all the time, baby. Passing touchdowns, it is Tom Brady destroying Peyton Manning's record of 55 with 60. Getting up there to the next echelon. Destroys his own personal best at 50. Rushing yards, we're not going to be in here with Todd Gurley. Uh, rushing touchdowns, we should crack. Oh, no, it's 21. All right, we got 20, I think. Uh, receiving yards, we should be in here. Nope, just kidding. Receiving touchdowns should be in here. We're at, we have 17, I think, Julio, so he's in there. Catches shouldn't be in here. Sacks, Cleo Mack sets the record for most sacks in a season with 26, of course. Uh, J.J. Watt, I think, I, did he have 20 for us? I'm not positive. Interceptions, no, we just will never be up in there. So this is this has been pretty good so far. Uh, a lot of work to get us here. And we have less XP than I would have thought. I don't know why these guys don't have more XP. Like, I guess they all made the Pro Bowl, but they've been there before. We got a lot of XP to spend. Even Kenny Britt. What did Kenny Britt do to get all that XP? I don't know. I guess he was involved. Um, this is a very good team. A lot of XP to go around. And uh, I'm going to use all that. And we're going to fire into the divisional. And I would hate to be the team that beats me right now. Because it, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. I never traded for any kicker or punter. It's going to it's gonna come down to it. Uh, Jacob Shum has a lot of XP. But I guess Josh Gafford looks pretty good. All I have to do is upgrade awareness. And that will get him up to a 78, 77. Okay. Um, I'm going to do all this XP off screen because it's kind of boring. But we're out here. We're out here. Kick accuracy is kind of low. Go probably awareness though mostly. He's up to near an eighty. Why am I showing this? I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. Uh, medium accuracy for uh, Tom Brady is only fifty eight thousand XP. Yeah, I can afford that. I'm gonna throw on the run. There we go, baby. This is the fully upgraded team. Confidence is playing a big factor in a lot of these overalls, as uh, it's boosting a lot of these attributes. Bunch of ninety nine overalls, including Tom Brady, Ty Gurley. Brady, Brady, I saw, I just said Brady. Uh, Brandon Cooks, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas at a 97. Joe Thomas, 99. Shaq Mason, 97 with no confidence. It's kind of weird. Uh, not sure why that is. I mean, it's boosting him, but it's not showing maybe. Travis Frederick, Zach Martin is at a 99. Travis Frederick playing up to a 96. Scherf at a 97. Kelsey, 99. Defensively, Earl Thomas, 95. Lennon Collins up to a 98. Shazier, 94. Yeah, Bobby Wagner at a 99. Jared Davis, 91. Chris Harris Jr., 97. A.J. Boye, 90. Marshawn Lattimore, 85. Defensive line, Khalil Mack, 99. Aaron Donald, 99. DeForest Buckner, 93. And then J.J. Watt, of course, 99. Could use some backups, probably. Is anyone good here? Eh, that question was answered very quickly. Who is going to eliminate us in the divisional? I can't wait to find out. It's the 10-6 Bills. I'm excited for this. Um, can't really do much here in terms of XP. We're just going to simulate to the conference championship. And, um, we've actually won. And we face the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship at home in Cleveland. Tom Brady hopefully was Offensive Player of the Week. And, uh, I don't think he was, actually, because he doesn't have a whole lot of XP here. Nah, he was, actually. Okay, uh, I'm going to let the CPU handle some of this XP. If you guys ever want to know how to do it quickly... Just do one of those bad boys. I guess those are the only two players that are uh, actually able to use their XP. Jared Davis and it looked like DeForest Buckner. And then well, that will load for about 48 years. And then you'll be able to go on and play your game. I don't really... I think I'm going to use a kicker training boost. Because that plays a big factor in, uh, in these games. Conference Championship. New England Patriots. To advance to the Super Bowl. Here we are. Here we go. Super Bowl bound. Super Bowl Minneapolis, Minneapolis, which is where this one was. Uh, this last one. Or this upcoming one. The Super Bowl hasn't happened. 12-4, uh, <laughs> and four, Cam Newton, uh, Panthers. Just to show you guys that I don't force wins. You guys know that by now. But just to show it. 
Times played zero. Oh, that's that was just now. Conference championship. Times played zero. Force wins none. Divisional. Times played zero. Force wins none. 42-21 over the Buffalo Bills. We'll check it out. See who did what. Tom Brady. Four passing touchdowns, zero interceptions. Tyrod Taylor is picked off twice. 343 yards through the air. Tom Brady actually got sacked three times. Rushing. Todd Gurley. I mean, it's an okay game, but the backup running back seems to play a lot in simulation sometimes. He only got three carries, but he was on the goal line, so he punched in a touchdown, it looks like. Receiving. I don't know who you are, because you don't exist. Touchdowns. Michael Thomas caught one. Julio caught one. Kenny Britt caught one. Antonio Andrews caught one. Odd group. Sacks let up were from Brandon Scherf and tight ends or running backs. Tackles, uh, let's look, just look at sacks. One and a half for Cleo Mack, 0.5 for Jared Davis and Aaron Donald and J.J. Watt. Interceptions, one for B-Wags and Marshawn Lattimore. In the conference championship, destroyed the Patriots, 31-7. to We'll see how exactly that happened. This is Matt Barkley's Patriots, by the way, yeah. Tom Brady was picked off twice as Matt Barkley uh, looked pretty solid through the air. Not a whole lot of sacks. This Tiger Early, two touchdowns on uh, 20 carries, 80 yards. Not terrible. Receiving Michael Thomas, 10 catches under 16 yards, 80 yards on 10 catches for Brandon Cooks. However, the touchdowns were for Julio and Todd Gurley. Blocking, who let up sacks? Non-offensive lineman, and then sacks for us. We have Khalil Mack with two, DeForest Buckner with one, and interceptions were for the Patriots, Stefan Gilmore, and Aaron Williams. Hook him horns. We actually traded him there. That's funny. Time for the Super Bowl, though. Um, I usually jump in. I feel like just simulating and seeing what happens. Simulation station, over and done with, across the nation. At least we had fun with it. And um, I already have seen the result. Cleveland Browns, in total domination, have sealed the deal in the Super Bowl with a 45, or 40, we'll check it out. Um, we won, regardless. Is anyone surprised? Because I certainly am not. Postseason, 42-25, to 25. force wins, none, times played, zero. 42-25, to 25. player stats, Tom Brady, 125.5 passer rating. Four touchdowns, one interception. 356 yards. Cam Newton had no answer for this defense. Hey, that's a familiar Super Bowl storyline. <laughs> Keep pounding. Rushing. Ty Gurley. 75 yards in a TD. Cam Newton actually had a rushing touchdown. And our fullback, Danny Vitale, also had a rushing touchdown. Two-yard punch in. As um, no 100-yard receivers in this game. However, receiving touchdowns. Julio had two. Ty Gurley had one. Ryan Hewitt, the backup tight end, had one. How about that? Sacks lit up four for the uh, offensive line. Actually, hold on. How many times was Cam Newton sacked? Four times. All offensive linemen. Defensively, quarterback sacks were one for Jared Davis, one for J.J. Watt, one for Ryan Shazier, one for Khalil Mack. We're sending the pressure. In interceptions, we had one from Ryan Shazier, who probably looks like he deserves a Super Bowl MVP. Only three tackles, but a sack and a pick is decent. Actually, probably doesn't deserve to go to him. Marshawn Lattimore and Chris Harris both had one as well. Any defensive touchdown, that'd be super cool in the Super Bowl. Nope, it probably should go to Tom Brady. Let's be honest, that's a Super Bowl MVP caliber performance. Four touchdowns, 356 yards through the air. But uh, yeah, that's uh, two seasons and done. I might clickbait my first ever video and say, uh, winning the Super Bowl with a zero on team in one year. Because that'd be fun. Uh, never clickbaited before. I'm really interested in trying it. Yeah, we did it in two. And I guess technically, if you want to say one year from the time where we are in this current season, even though I did trading beforehand, which, I mean, technically I could have done it at the start of the next season um, and achieved the same result. So, I don't know. One season, two seasons, I don't know what you want to say. We did it. We're in 2018, which is what it is now. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. I'm the best. You thought I was going to say take it easy, but also take it easy. I'm still the best. This shit don't run well. It's fine, I